too. And uh, we certainly want to thank uh, Dan Amaranti for trying to label all of this for us. Now, please keep in mind, this is not the most up-to-date satellite picture because there's a lot of construction that's going on at Bradley Airport. But at least this gives you a better idea so you can sort of place where a lot of the images you're seeing are. Now, we know that this uh, B-17 was trying to come in on what they call the north-south runway. That's runway 6. That's this runway right here. And this white spot is the start of the runway. It missed it by some six to 800 feet right over here. This is the de-icing area that Erica was uh, just talking about. You can see some of the uh, tanks, storage tanks. We're assuming that's de-icing fluid that's in there. And then this white line right here is one of the, uh, for lack of a better word, hangars that's there, sort of those semi-circular buildings that appears to have been damaged either from direct impact with the plane or by the fire that happened afterwards. So this right here is about a six to 800 hundred foot difference by our reckoning from satellites but just as important is what this plane did not hit or almost hit first of all this is Shep Hester Road right here this is the main loop that you go through uh, if you are picking people up or dropping people off at Bradley International Airport it comes around and this is also another road right here that isn't quite uh, uh, clarified by this line that's only about a hundred feet away from where this happened and then there's this lot right here now this is normally I believe long-term lot B at last check I was actually just at the airport dropping my father off on Sunday they've cleared this lot out right here because this is part of the construction that's going on at Bradley International Airport so uh, while I can't confirm that I'm just working off of memory there weren't a lot of cars right here however on the other side of Shep Hester Road, back where there used to be Terminal B, they knocked this down many, many years ago, they are using that as sort of a short-term lot for cars. So there were a lot of cars right there and potentially a lot of people, and that's only about as far away from the site of the crash as Runway 6 was. So as bad as this was with eight people hurt, this could have been a lot worse. We don't know exactly where the plane came down, but it may have come down right here where it was as opposed to skidding on in. But that's at least an idea of sort of where this was. By the way, for reference, this is the main terminal right over here. Uh, this is the main parking garage. Uh, the Hilton, or I'm sorry, the Marriott Hotel, where we're waiting for Governor Lamont to speak, is right here. And then over here, the Connecticut Air National Guard. We were worried that this was going to be a part of this. But again, even though this is an old military plane, the B-17 bomber, the Flying Fortress. It was not being flown in a military capacity. As far as we know, the Connecticut Air National Guard has had nothing to do with this. This was being flown in a commercial capacity as part of a sort of traveling exhibit where people can come and see a lot of these vintage planes of war, these World War II era planes, take off and land. And they appear to have been doing that because, as we saw before, the website Flight Aware that we use to uh, try to track these things had had this particular plane, the B-17, scheduled for a five-minute flight, scheduled to take off at 9.45 and land at 9.53. And as best we can tell, the FAA said the crash happened at 10 o'clock. We don't know if they mean to the minute or in that rough neighborhood, but that certainly fits with the timeline of events.